Hi there, this is Roy, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the installation of the BBS HD in the Cortina frame. And now we're going to fit the BBS HD into the bottom bracket shell of the Cortina bicycle. Now, of course, after removing the bottom bracket itself, it's probably a good idea to go in and just wipe everything down, just clean it off, spray it out. Uh, I've had this shell off, uh, the bottom bracket off, a number of times on this bike because it's gone through different motor systems. And so I've uh, I put thread lube on there, some anti-seize um, over the years. And so, at any rate, it's, uh, it's quite nice and clean at this point. And I have the unit in my hand and I'm going to fit it into the bike. And you're going to see right away that there's an issue and Luna has provided the shims to help us sort this out. So um, here we go. So in it goes. And what you can see is that there's an interference here. And I'll show you that close up right now. The unit right in this location is hitting and we can see that there's some gaps here. So we're, we're going to remove the unit, put shims on the axle, on the BBS HD axle, bottom bracket portion, and shim that so that we have some appropriate clearance right over here. So let's take a look at the shims that come with the unit now. And here they are. And because it looks like, and here's our bottom bracket portion of the unit, the motor unit, I'm going to slip these guys on. And because it looked like there was quite a bit of distance between here and the end of the bottom bracket, I'm going to put all of these shims on and we're going to slip it in in a bit. Get my hands out of the way. So we get all these guys on. And there we go. And we'll fit it into the machine now. We'll fit it into the bottom bracket. Well, in just a bit. And uh, have a look at how that is and see what, how much of these we have to take out. And, and we'll use this little scale to help us uh, as a kind of a feeler gauge to help us figure out what the clearance should be. So now, after the unit is in the bottom bracket, I'm just going to walk you through it here when it's off the bike. Let's take a look at this, this part of the bracket. And you can see that there's some indents, but this is the side where the machine has actually pushed through and created these raised areas that are, um, that will, in a sense, bite into the bottom bracket shell of the bicycle to keep the unit from rotating. So I'm going to slip that on now. I'm making sure that the, the raised area, not the larger re recessed area, but the raised area is towards the center of the bike. So I'm going to slip that on now. And then you'll see that it has two places here and here where we can put a bolt through and I'm going to slip it on and you can see that it matches up here with the unit. There's a threaded hole and on the other side at the bottom there's another threaded hole and so also that as this goes on because of the shims that we've added there may be spaces here, and we'll look at that actually on the bike, but I'm showing it to you now so that you kind of a prep for what to look out for. And uh, we'll have to fill those spaces with shims also. So after we get the unit in the bike, we've spaced it out right so we have our clearance, then we slip this on, and then here's the real nut, the heavy duty nut, because there's a lock nut also, a lighter nut that's made out of aluminum 
that will go on afterwards and it also is, you know it's a nice looking part and it will cover the uh, the actual nut that does the the heavy lifting here uh, the uh, the tightening so let's get this on I'm working with my left hand which works pretty well there we go and so this will screw on and tighten up against the bottom bracket and uh, We'll just keep screwing that in there until it tightens up properly and then we'll work on these on the bike, the shims, spacers, washers, to get that just the way we want it. And then once we're done tightening, we put the aluminum, how the lock nut on and so you'll be able to see that this will, not only does it cover the less attractive main nut, the nut that's doing all the heavy lifting here, the heavy squeezing, the tightening, but then we put this on, it locks down against it, and it covers it. So it's a kind of a escutcheon vanity kind of a plate that covers over. So I'm going to take these off now, and uh, we'll fit the unit in the bike and check our shims. All right, so now we can see the unit is in the bike, and we can see that there's actually quite a bit of space right here. Get the camera in place and see if I can get it focused right. And um, there's quite a bit of space, so there's there's plenty of room to uh, to uh, function there. And so I'm going to take one of these shims out and see if I can reduce that space some. I'll be right back. So. I'm not sure about my logic here, but I had all of them pushed up against, and it was too much. It was too much. The clearance at here between the frame was uh, more than it really needed to be, and I'm concerned about the chain line, not, so I don't want to move the unit too far away from the, sh from the uh, bicycle bottom bracket and the bicycle itself. There's a, quite a wide one. There are two that are a bit wider, and then there, which are this one and this one, and then there are two that are narrower. So I pulled this guy out, the fat one out, and pushed that up, and the clearance was about right. But I decided that having more surfaces that might work on each other, that it might be better to replace these two with this one, and they're about the same um, thickness, if you will. This one is 150 thousandths. These two together are 120 thousandths, so um, it's close. And uh, so I decided that that was the way I was going to put this, these units, these shims on. And we'll look at it in the bike one more time. So here we are in the bike. We have three shims, the thickest and the um, one of each size, a thin one, the, the middle size, and the thickest size. And you can see here that there's plenty of room here now, and uh, it's close, but not too close. And this is the way I'm going to set it up. We have the BBS HD in the frame, spaced properly. And I'm going to put the first clamp spacer in place and slip that over. Now I'm going to put on the, the nut and I see one side that has a bit of a flat on it and the other side is a bit more rounded. So I'm going to put the side with the flat towards the bottom bracket towards the bicycle. And I've already kind of looked at this and I'm going to put the spacers and in this case it is a this spacer and the screw and I'm going to slip the spacer behind the bracket in between the bracket and the motor assembly and 
going to start that screw in place. So I have tightened up the two screws and their spacers and pulled the motor up into place, rotated it up to the bottom tube, and now with my trusty lunar wrench, I'm going to tighten Get that good and tight, not too tight, not too loose. And now I'm going to put on the aluminum lock nut cover. That is the other end of my lunar wrench that has the multiple serrations. And find the right spot and just pull that tight and not too tight. This one is aluminum, it's a lock nut, not too tight. There we go. The BDS HD unit is mounted in the bike.